All right, the next thing I want to do is uh, set the thickness. I'm going to show you another piece, which is a uh, menu down in, mod in the modify menu, and it's called change parameters. So we can actually set global variables up here and give them descriptive names. So I'm going to call this thick thickness, material thickness, and I'll just start off with four millimeters, maybe a four millimeter thick uh, material. And so now we have a variable in the system called thickness. Uh, I'm going to do use the dimension here, and this is the really cool part of fusion. So I have the dimension. I'm going to just start typing thickness, and right, all I have to do is type T, and we see it pop up there. Select it, press Enter, and this is equal to that parameter now. I'll do that here also. So now we can change it in the um, variable and it will update everything. Um, so this is pretty much um, our side panel, except for the, when the laser sees these uh, vector lines, it's going to basically use every single one of these to cut a vector line or cut. So we so it would cut off our uh, our fingers. So we want to trim this piece off. And when I trim it, it's going to cause some issues. So I trimmed that. I'll trim that. And it said constraints or dimensions were removed during operation. So I'm going to assume that it's probably the, wow, it really did something weird. So I just moved that around and everything kind of flipped and did something crazy. Um, I think what it did was it just removed the, uh, the midpoint. So yeah, that's not in the midpoint. That's not in point, midpoint. So we need another method for telling our, our drawing that we want this finger right in the middle. I actually think that's a fairly easy one. So I'm going to select those two and I'm going to make them equal. And I'm going to make those guys equal too. So, okay. And notice we didn't constrain the distance from here to here at all, right? So, and, or from here to here. So that's free floating. And we'll set that later. Right now, I don't care too much. Um, once we start deciding, is this a, um, you know, is this meant to be, I don't know, um, um, what is it? What is this shape supposed to represent? We may want to play around with the uh, the sizes to fit whatever we're trying to accomplish with the uh, structure. Okay, let's go ahead and do the top now. I'm going to create another rectangle. And again, there's a lot of different ways to do this, so I'll go ahead and so these are the rectangles that are going to be the cutout. Uh, so. When we look at our drawing, that guy right here, um, these panels are set in a little bit from the sides, and they're also there's a little bit of a set in there too. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cre create a uh, a construction line or something that helps me uh, uh, determine where I want my um, pieces at. So I'm going to start right up here somewhere, and that X means it's going to be um, a coincident with this line. I'm going to go down, and then you'll notice when the square goes around it, it's basically telling you that it is um, vertical. So I can do this, and we know this line's not going to be totally flush or um, parallel with the side. And we see that square, so we know that's going to be parallel. I'll do another line over here and make it... Now I'm going to select these guys and tell it to be a construction line, which is right up in here. So now this is telling the system that, hey, these are for reference. And uh, what I'm going to do is take the midpoint of this one and put it with the midpoint of that one, the midpoint of that one, and put it with the midpoint there. Um, so now we know at least these fingers are right in the center, um, and then we'll do parts that you already know by giving that guy the thickness variable. This one also, and then we also want, here's another little trick, so I want the dimension here, 
I want this dimension to equal this dimension. If I come here and click it, it's just said D1. Um, this dimension is a global variable now, and we can reference that global vi variable using D1. So if I press enter, those should be equal. So I can either do use the equal constraint or just use a dimension and, uh, and set them to be uh, equal to that variable. So I'll just set those guys to be equal. Um, so one one more problem. Um, this the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here need to be equal. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the dimension constraint there again. Oops. I don't know what I did. All right. Let's do 15. Alright, um, so what's left to do is just decide, you know, what do we want the full, the whole shape, the whole size to be, so how, how high should it be, which would be the distance from here to here, let me just go ahead and put that there, type 70, um, the distance from here to here, and we'll do 50, and Another cool thing, a uh, very powerful part, is what uh, we'll use um, some of these references and um, and make this length not equal to or the the depth and the width uh, not equal to this, but it, we want it to be just a little bit bigger than it all the time. Because if you look at the drawing, uh, here's where the side ends and there's a little bit of a lip. I'm going to say that this is about um, 30 or 40 percent bigger or deeper than this so let's just try to encode that um, somehow here's D all right so this is going to be equal to that guy but maybe times 1.5 and we're going to do that here too we'll just make it equal to that then D12 all right so now we can change whatever variables we want and update it. So maybe I think these sizes are fine, but why don't we um, why don't we make it a little bit shorter? Let's make it 50. Let's make it 40. It looks like geometry has stayed the same. Um, let's go ahead and change the, the material to, actually I know my material is three millimeters. So we'll change that. That looks like that's updated. Um, okay, so we have our, ooh, we almost have it all. Looks like somewhere we have a line there. So I'm going to go edit again and do trim. Let's see if this causes problems. I have a feeling this is going to cause a problem. So let's just go ahead and check and see. Yeah, okay, well, that's not too bad. We'll just select that guy and that guy, make those equal. And we'll hope that everything is happy there. It looks good. It looks good to me. All right, so we'll stop it. And how do we get this out of um, Fusion and into Illustrator? Um, it's pretty easy. We go to the sketch, um, it's two dimensional art, and we save it as a DXF. And we're going to save it as a small structure, or how about a basic structure. And then uh, we'll go to Illustrator and just open. There it is. Oh, I already had practiced. Okay, this is an important part. So with the original size and the scale, we know we were in millimeters. And, and so one... Uh, unit from our DXF is going to equal, um, we know one millimeter. When I change it to millimeters, it gives me this number, but we know that one unit is one millimeter. So this is what's going to make sure the, the, the uh, draw, drawing or the lines come over with the proper scale. I'll press OK. And here's our drawing. It looks like all the construction lines came over as regular lines. I'm going to delete those. And we've got everything here. Uh, whenever you're using the laser cutter, I always 
um, set the artboard to the size of our material of the material you have. So um, what I'm going to do is just say, let's say our material is just this long skinny piece, and we've measured it. Actually, let's uh, show the ruler. inches. So let's say that our piece was a three inch by, uh, we measured it's a three inch by, by eight inch piece. Okay, so now we want to lay out all of our parts on this three inch by eight inch uh, piece of cardboard today. All right, so we have our artboard. We can just take it and lay it out. Hopefully everything fits really on this. I'm just assuming it's going to fit. And that's only our top and our bottom, so I'm going to um, command C and V, cut and paste it. Um, looks like it isn't going to fit, so for now I'm just going to pretend that our uh, piece of paper or our piece of cardboard is, uh, what is that, 3 inches by 8.25 plenty of room. Okay, to prep this for sending to the laser cutter, the laser cutter is going to cut every single one of these paths. Sometimes you'll have two paths and it will go over twice. If you have a vector line and there's another vector line going right over the top, the, the laser will go over it a second time and so you want to be sure there's only one uh, vector um, overlap here. There's no overlaps because then it uses more laser time and sometimes it cuts a little bit more than what you want it to do. Uh, our laser, whenever it sees anything black, it's going to etch it. So it's going to uh, uh, kind of just draw, you know, use it just to burn a little bit of a pattern. We want it to cut. Whenever it sees um, red, it cuts every vector that's red. Um, and it has to be um, in RGB format. So. So we're in red, green, blue. Here's red. Um, it looks like this isn't going to be good. And it's in red. Now, it also, if it has a fat line, it's going to see, oh, maybe there are, it's going to interpret that as, you know, three or four or five vector lines right next to each other. So you want it to be as skinny as possible. And I just do 0.1 points. And it's kind of hard to see. Um, but we have this now, and it's ready to be um, sent to the printer. And it should come out, and all the pieces fit together really nicely and cleanly.